So in this video, I'm going to go over the calculations relatively briefly surrounding the calculation of standard error of skew and then the 95% confidence intervals that I reported in the textbook. So here is the formula associated with standard error of skew. To be honest, I really feel like there's no intuitive appeal associated with it, so it's really not the type of formula I would recommend spending time memorizing. But I just thought the main point to take away from this is that the standard error of skew is derived essentially entirely from sample size. It has nothing to do with standard deviation. And here are the calculations that I performed in the analysis, which is based on 5,225 individuals who reported their annual earnings. So the skew comes out to be something rather small, 0 0.034. And it's small because the sample size was so huge. So next, you have to identify the T value that corresponds with the 95% portion of the T distribution with degrees of freedom of 5,224. So 5% is what's left over in the distribution at both tails. This is what the 2T is for. So both portions of the tails of the distribution. So it's really splitting the 0.05 in half. And I used exactly the same a procedure that I did for the previous video where I can write equals t inv to t 0 0.05 and then degrees of freedom which is always n minus 1 so in this case here that's 5 2 2 4 and that gives a value of 1.96 which is interesting because it is exactly the value to two decimal places that you would obtain from the Z distribution. So I've been repeating myself about this, that the T distribution is really very similar to the Z distribution. And once you get to sample sizes of a couple of hundred, it really does get very, very close. And clearly, once you're in the thousands, there's very, very little difference between the Z distribution and the T distribution. So that's where I got the value to multiply the standard error, which was 0.034, I multiplied that by 1.96 because that's what I got from this Excel function. And when I multiplied 1.96, I ended up getting 0 0.067 rounded. And that gave me the opportunity to subtract and add that value from the actual skew that was estimated from the 5,224 people who reported their earnings. And the 95% confidence intervals were estimated at the lower bound 2.193 and the upper bound of 2.327. And it's at this section of the textbook where I begin to allude to inferential statistics because I suggest that because the lower bound estimate of 2.193 is not zero or less than zero, I suggest that very likely in the population annual earnings is skewed in a positive direction. So skew is estimated at 2.26, and the lower bound confidence interval is 2.19. That's not even close to zero. And that is a suggestion that there really is positive skew in the population. So we got very high confidence in this case because the sample size was, as far as statistics are concerned, it was huge. And we now have a lot of confidence to think that the skew is positive in the population.